Hey guys, what's up? In this video, we are talking about ASICs carbon plated racing shoes. Hey guys, what's up? And welcome back to the channel. How are we all doing? Let me know in the comments do you have any of these ASIC shoes? We've got Meta Speed Sky, we've got the Meta Racer, and we've got the Magic Speed which all have a carbon plate in. We're we'll going through what each one's got today, which ones I prefer for what and why, and hopefully that'll help you make some form of choice when you're thinking about buying one of these. Right guys, so ASICs really upped their game in 2021. Well, 2020 as well, because we've got the Meta Racer, in terms of carbon plated racing shoes. They kind of were left a little bit behind by some of the manufacturers out there, thinking about Nike and Socony and people like that. But in 2021, we've got a full suite of carbon plated sort of racing shoes on offer from ASICs. Uh, at the top of the level, we've got the Meta Speed Sky, which has really only readily come available now. Uh, this is at the top end, and I'm going to put all the stats and features up. Um, somewhere on the screen in terms of price but it's at the top of the price uh, in terms of price point uh, we've got a nylon based uh, midsole with the flight foam glass turbo it's got a full length carbon plate you've got the um, ASICS grip I think it's called on the outside which is the stuff from the now if you've seen uh, some of my videos I've got the um, Trabuku I said Trabuku Max ASICS uh, trail shoes it's the same stuff on the outside in this um, but this is their sort of marathon racing shoe I would say full length carbon plate on that bad boy then we go down we've got the Meta Racer which is my sort of favorite favorite 10k shoe of last year this is really more of a racing flat but it does have a bottom loaded uh, carbon plate with the flight foam midsole in it is quite a firm ride as you can see it's got a low stack we've got a super breathable upper in it um, but I say this is more suited I think for your sort of 10k's and that sort of area because of the low stack and the sort of firmness of the ride and then we've got the magic speed which is the cheapest of the options uh, it's 145 49 quid I can't remember it'll be on the box up there and you've got flight foam blast in the midsole on this one and you've got a I think it's a three-quarter carbon plate from memory again it'll be up there but this is more I would say daily trainerish. think towards your sort of sock and endorphin speed that kind of way so a, a training shoe with a plate in it um, and it, I think it complements these guys here uh, different price points so something I think for everybody in terms of budget also in terms of feel you've got the uh, the higher stack squishiness uh, of this shoe then you've got the firmer right here and then you've got sort of a balance between the two with this shoe but which one do I prefer for what um, and all that kind of stuff now oh, by the way we've done videos on all these shoes so check those out um, but yeah let's get into where I think these are best used are they any good and that kind of thing next Right, so let's start with the Meta Racer because it's the oldest one. And I alluded to it earlier. Actually, I alluded to it. I spoke about it. it this is a 10K shoe, people, uh, for me. It is a lower stack um, and it is a front-loaded plate a bottom loaded plate which really for me just gets you on your toes and starts gunning it but after that sort of 10k it starts to beat up your feet i have worn this over 13 miles and towards the end of the run at pace it was getting it was just getting a little bit too firm i actually prefer the sketches um elite uh, hyper elite that i've got uh, if you've not seen the video check that out but i would really recommend that shoe over this this is a great great shoe super breathable lightweight is fast i ran my 10k pb in this shoe um, it is a quick quick shoe but it is hard so if you're looking for a decent 10k shoe or if you want a firm half marathon shoe this could be the way to go i think it's reasonably priced it, it is just like basically a racing flat with a carbon plate in it but it is a, it's a very good shoe then we're going to talk about the magic speed because the magic speed is for me it's a little bit of a dud i wasn't that impressed with it it just felt like uh well, it just felt like an evo ride uh, and that's nothing wrong with that because i like an evo ride but it wasn't anything sort of quick and snappy about it there wasn't anything that got me excited i think actually let me put the, the, the magic speed down but the um i think i made speed the thing with uh with this shoe i just think the socket endorphin speed is such a good shoe it, it kind of doesn't warrant you buying this if you're a huge asics fan you're going to like it it is firmer than it looks the flight foam blast is firmer uh in this than it is on the nova blast and i'm not sure really why you would buy this over the socket endorphin speed 2 or speed 1 if you get it it is comfortable it is breathable it does everything you want you can use it for daily training um 
but it's just yeah the out you know the outsoles know it's going to come on the camera it's you know it's held up down the rivers and stuff like that but for me personally i would get you to buy the socket dolphin speed and then finally we've got the meta sky speed now this is uh this sort of marathon plate you chew from asics um it's an interesting shoe i can't wait in a way to try it over the marathon distance at dawny um and see how i get on with it versus the alpha fly we're going to do that we're going to give it a go um after the sort of speed tests and things that i've done and the reviews i've done on the shoe it has convinced me to run it at the marathon um although <laughs> i probably changed my mind although it's still not i don't know it's still not a sort of awesome feeling as the as the alpha fly when you do run it i don't know it's just something about that alpha fly i think it may be confidence maybe up here where i have run the alpha fly over the sort of marathon distance i've got the confidence in that shoe maybe it's purely just a confidence thing that i haven't got yet in this shoe but I am going to stick to it and I am going to run it over the marathon distance this year. It is lightweight, there's plenty of stack in there. It's a softer feeling, it's not as unstable as a next percent, which I think is, is a good thing. Um, that's one of the reasons why I don't wear the next percent over the marathon distance, is because it's too unstable. But it's got plenty of width in the toe box. You do have to run pretty fast in it to get a real kick from the plate um, because of that sort of high toe lift. See that? And getting that rocker and getting onto that carbon plate. But I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how I get on over the marathon distance in the shoe um, when we get into October. But this is a lot of fun. I do like the um, midsole compound, the Flight Foam Blast Turbo, uh, which is their nylon um, material compound. So very much like um, what you get in the next percent in terms of Zoom X, but it's their own um, version of that. The ASICS grip on the outsole is super sticky, so there's plenty of grip on there. Um, wear and tear not brilliant i'm going to save these now for race day i think um so i don't chew them up too much although i have quite enjoyed wearing them on a few training runs um but it is 250 quid and that's the problem you know do you i don't want to advise you to to go and get the shoe if 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 you've only got sort of you've got the 250 i'm so lucky that i've got the alpha fly on that i mean if, if i was to tell you to go and do one shoe it would be the alpha fly because i know that i work for you but there is something about this shoe. It is a really, really good shoe, but I think you've got to be able to sort of get on with it and have the confidence to go for it. And like I say, because for me, I've done a few marathons now, um, and I don't really necessarily worry about the times too much. I'm more interested to see how the shoes get on. I'm not that bothered about switching out the Alpha Fly, but maybe if you're doing, you know, you're gunning for your first PB in a marathon, you've done maybe one or two marathons, and now you're really focused on getting a PB, maybe maybe the um, the Alpha Fly or the Next Percent could be the way to go. But th this is a good show. I just found this more stable than the Next Percent. Um, and it just suited me more. But A6 shoes suit me more. So this is a good shoe. I'm rambling on as always. But this is a very, very, very good marathon shoe. But I don't know where I should say to go and get it over the Alpha Fly. So there we go, people. I think bottom line is A6 have upped their game in 2021. Let me know your feedback on these shoes. I'd be very interested to know, particularly on the Met Sky Speed, because I can't really seem to make my mind up on that one. Um, but let me know your feedback on these shoes. Let me know what you think about them, how you're getting on with them, all that kind of stuff. Very interested to know. But yeah, I think the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway, apart from the fact of I've got too many orange shoes, is that ASICs have really, really upped their carbon plated racing game this year. Um, and I can't wait to put them in action. Uh, well, in particular this one, towards the end of the year.